Hey, so what's going on, guys? So I want to share with you guys something that the Lord's been teaching me over this past season. And I think that the Lord would want a lot of you listening as well as other Christians around the world and especially in this nation to really learn and hear uh, from. And that's really a perspective check and a perspective check that involves really humbling yourself before the Lord. And so, you know, this verse, 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time, he may exalt you. And what's going on in the world right now is that a lot of people are confused and there's a spirit of um, you know, dissension around the, uh, the U.S. As, w- as well as the world. There's a spirit of just understanding what the facts are, what the truth is. And so many of us, we're holding on to things that we believe is true. And we really think uh, from the bottom of our hearts and whether you're you know, a fervent Christian or not, or whether you really believe something as being true, is that it could not be, and it could be uh, such misinformation or such, um, you know, false uh, data that you would, you are being deceived. And so I wanted to share what this really means, where in your posture, in your attitude, and in your understanding that if you humble yourself before the Lord, God would at the right time exalt you. And, you know, exalting just really quickly to that point first is, not an exaltation, and sometimes it is, but not necessarily an exaltation of position, of promotion, of influence, of greater responsibility. It could be, but really a lot of times it's just an understanding of wisdom and exaltation of your elevation and knowledge and your insight to something, perspective to something, and an open door to be able to see and walk through so that you can have a clear picture of something on the other side. And because we don't really humble ourselves before the Lord. And even that, humbling yourself uh, before the Lord, what does that even really mean? And so many, so many of us, we just pray every morning or we may just come before the Lord and say, oh Lord, I humble myself before you. But really it's just with words, it's not with our heart. And we don't fully, with all of our being, with all of our energy, with all of our heart and our mind, we don't really come before the Lord and say, Father, I don't know anything, I have no, idea what might be going on in the world. I might have no idea what the future holds. I may have no idea why I'm in a certain circumstance. I may have no idea what the reasoning or the logic behind it is, even though in my rational mind, I think I do, but I don't. And that kind of submission and humility and coming before the Lord and acknowledging that I only have such a small picture. I only see this, but Lord, you see all of this and more. And to be able to have that posture, to be able to have that understanding, in coming before the Lord and saying, and it's not necessarily that you see, you know, yourself, uh, you um, think of yourself um, less, but really it's thinking uh, less of yourself. And there's a big difference, right? If you think of um, yourself less, it's not, it's, it could be something where you're thinking, you know, suicidally or, or depressively and really putting yourself down. It's not necessarily that because then you'd be hating yourself, but really you're thinking of yourself less because I uh, think uh, thinking of yourself less because you're putting yourself in a place where in relation to God, you're saying, Father, I, in relation to what you know, in relation to what even other people know, I don't know much. And I want to be open to the fact that you may be teaching me something. You may be humbling me in a certain ideology, in a certain cultural upbringing, bringing, in a certain way that I don't really know and understand, but I thought I did. And I want to humble myself before you because I want to empty myself and I want to prostrate myself. I want to get rid of all my preconceived notions. I've heard a rumor that it's this. I've heard some news that it's this. And just like in the Bible, when you know Joshua uh, and the ten spies they went out, uh, a few went back with the right report. The others told them, "No, this is uh, you know these these people are huge and they're terrifying, and you can never get over and overcome these people." But then a few others with the right news, even though there were less people, they had the facts, and that's because. The Lord had given them that insight and that wisdom. And if you don't have a posture in your heart to commit yourself and humble yourself before the Lord, then the Lord won't even exalt you. He won't be uh, able to put you in a place of insight, of understanding, of elevation, of higher influence, of higher, you know, um, whatever it is in terms of open doors, because you haven't even humbled yourself. And this isn't something where it's saying, you know, sometimes if you humble yourself, then sometimes I may exalt you. Or if you really humble yourself, then, you know, I may exalt you, I may not exalt you. No, it's a it's a fact in the Bible that the Lord promises if you humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, 
then at the proper time, he would exalt you. But the problem is we don't really know what 100, 100% humility before the Lord is. And we don't really know what exalting means. And exalting is in no way giving you some kind of, a, you know, like a reward that says, oh, oh, look at me, I'm exalted. But really, it's objectively speaking, it is something that's, you know, far greater than that so that he can use you. He can get all the glory. He can get all the praise through what he's doing through you because God is looking for people to use. God is looking for people with the right posture, with the right attitude so that he can use this, these people without any sort of hindrance, any sort of blockade so that that the spirit could flow through them, that that person can be a mouthpiece, that that person can be a hands and feet of wherever they are, whether it's in the local church, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's even, you know, even for me on YouTube. And I never would have thought that you know, the growth that I had would have been this. And, and and this is no glory to myself. This is no honor to myself. It's all glory to God. And even as I, you know, I've mentioned in previous videos that with the prophetic, uh, um, you know, words that I've said, or as well as the other content things that I said, those things I give no credit to myself. And I, uh, in fact, every morning I pray and I say, Father, I'm a nobody. And as Paul says in Ephesians chapter three, um, I am the least of all the saints. I am the least of all the saints, but because of God's grace and because of God's mercy and his love for me, he was able to put me in a position where, for Paul, he was able to speak to all the Gentiles. He went through all the, the churches across the Gentile lands to be able to deliver the gospel message. And because he had such an opportunity, even though he was coming from such a low place, being a murderer, being the wicked person that he was prior to being converted, he was able to be used. And even for me, I say um, a lot that I am just a loser, but I'm being used as, as an assassin for his glory because it's not me. It's no credit to myself, but it's all to it's all to God. And wherever this goes, wherever your influence goes, wherever my influence goes, wherever God's open door goes, it really comes down first to that you humble yourself before the Lord and that you say, Father, it is not I, it is not me. I don't know anything about anything, Father. And even though I may use my brain to conjure up what might be rational, that's not the case. And we're so quick to be able to use our mouth. We're so quick to be able to come to a conclusion, to come to a thought. But so many of us, because we are so arrogant and we're so prideful and we don't even acknowledge that. And even if there's a small amount of pride, just a small bit of pride in you, God can't use that because he doesn't want to exalt somebody who has a temptation or has an inclination, who has the fleshly desire to come uh, above what he really is or what he or she really is. And that is that you are a servant of God, that you are an obedient, um, submissive uh, servant of God under uh, Jesus Christ. And you know, if you're struggling with that, I wanna encourage you that in your prayers and in your walks, and even as you view this video, if you're getting angry, if you're literally getting angry at this video, as I'm speaking, you know, the, the words of, the, of scripture to you, and if you're really thinking to yourself, man, this guy knows nothing, man, my parents know nothing, man, my friends, this whole world, they know nothing, you know, Trump knows nothing, nobody knows anything, I know what it is. And even if you don't say that explicitly, if your heart shows that, if your mind shows that, then I do wanna encourage you to really come before the Lord and ask him, man, Lord, Am I missing something? Is there something in me? Is there something that's in my flesh, in my preconceived notions, in my feelings and in my emotions that's hindering me to be exalted, to be exalted to a place of knowledge and understanding of wisdom, of insight, because he wants to use you. He wants to get you on that train to be able to do God's glory, God's work. He wants to be able to put you in a place at a higher level on that elevator. And he wants to be able to put you in a place where he's going to really speak to you and he's going to really open your perspective. It's not necessarily that this is the right theology, that's the right theology and I wanna be in this camp, I wanna be in the Republican camp, I wanna be in this camp. I don't, it's not about that. It's really about the Lord. It's about the kingdom work. It's about being abiding in Christ and really seeing it from God's perspective uh, more than your own perspective and your fleshly perspective. So just want to encourage you guys with that, that you know, even as I pray that every morning and as I pray this, um, you know, before the Lord, I, I do this throughout the day too. Like, Lord, I'm, I humble myself before you. May you give me that insight. May you give me that understanding. May you lead me because I want to be in the back seat or I, I don't, I don't want at least to be in the driver's seat. I want you, Jesus, to take the driver's seat. And so I want to encourage you guys with that because it's a tough time now. It's a tough time to really discern whether 
you're going through COVID related, you know, sufferings, if you lost your job, you're going through, uh, you know, social issues and, and tough times just because, you know, you're pent up at home, you know, you, you have different, uh, different issues and, and things. And if you're confused about the election, if you're confused about even what I'm saying, just want to encourage you guys to really submit yourself before the Lord, humble yourself because God can speak to you. God can really use you and he wants to exalt you. And this is a promise. This is a promise in first Peter five, six, that if you do this, then he can open that up for you. And so, um, you know, may God bless you, may he use you and that he would just open up perspective for you guys. So stay tuned for more and um, God bless.